Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to Enigmatica 6 Expert. Now I'm basically just showing you guys a little bit of footage. I'm not going to show you every single pharaoh or the entire pyramids. I ran quite a bit. Uh, most of them were business as usual. There was two in particular that something came up that was a little bit, uh, a little bit scary. So, um, basically i had one uh you're gonna see some footage from it i had one that i actually crashed the boss the pharaoh was one hit from dead um right here uh you'll notice it kind of seizes up and then it just crashed me straight to desktop and whenever i came back and i didn't think to hit record as i was logging in because i was like eh. i was like i'm probably gonna be dead i'm gonna have to run back over there i actually came back in you can see i hit to start record right there and um actually came back in with two hearts and then also this one this one was a scary fight like so far we have not died in adam from any adam mobs the only time that we have died is that one komodo dragon last episode but this guy he wouldn't come through the door to follow me to my normal spot and i was like well i'm gonna i'm gonna try to poke him this is generally a really bad idea when you're low geared but i was like i'm gonna try to poke him through the door and you could see he kept pulling me back, he kept pulling me back, and then I got thrown into a zombie, got withered, and he was dealing massive damage. I was so sure that I was going to die, right? And I came in this room, and of course this room is terrible because you're going to be backed up into a corner with him and all the zombies. Terrible idea, but this is where the umbrella shield really gets to shine, is in this fight. Uh, because, I mean, every time he hits me, he just wrecks me does massive massive damage and this is the only one that ever got me like this like normally i just run them back to my hall and i go to one end and i shoot them until they die you know it's just normal stuff uh, but this one i really had to like heavily turtle on this fight which usually i don't try to fight like this but uh it was my heart was beating you know it's like super super scary so i wanted to show you guys this entire fight because if you if you do get in this situation use your sh use your shield a lot uh you can see i'm trying to get the timing down to actually be able to hit him between his uh pearl cows you know uh, so i hopefully that i can deal damage but block all of his uh, and then when i finally do get the timing i start kind of somewhat going on the offensive here and trying to hit him between each of his each of his pearls and just really heavily uh turtling out this fight <clears throat> and uh then whenever he spawns his ads what I do is try to get positioned right here so that the ads are between me and him. And you can see that pearl, it pulls extremely hard. But you back up right into this corner and kind of hold your shield right in that area. And he will actually manage to kill off his ads rather quickly, you know. Uh, and then it's just back to the fight until he spawns ads again. And then we'll turtle again for a little bit. Just trying to go in between each pearl or two. Uh, for the damage and then back into the corner uh, and let him kill off his ads for us so there we go and now he kind of positions himself in an even better spot because when he's right here i can basically line up his ads so much easier uh, in that corner there but uh yeah i mean this was an extremely extremely tough fight like it was scary for me uh to say the least because i was like i'm so sure this is the one i'm gonna die on right so you can see we've done pretty good. All of these are duplicates, so we have seven uh, duplicate items. Before we push on, I'd like to go back to Adam. And at this point, we really need to go find ourselves some Nebu. Uh, ideally, we'd just be looking for like a cave, some kind of a cave entrance, maybe. Like right here looked good. And it's possible we may come across some stone guard while we're down here. Now, we've got a lot of other loot. We'll take a look at that in a second. I mean, we've amassed a huge stockpile of, of treasure, to say the least. Plus, a lot of stuff, like we've gotten a few shadow gems. There we go. That is a stone guard. I actually killed one earlier because he was kind of like at the mouth of a cave. So, And it's not super common. Oh, we got a Mimic. Yes. We got a Villager Hat. Awesome. I know a lot of people 
on the server were looking for those, like, uh, it took them a bit to uh, come across. This is the first time we've actually really been underground much. I don't really care for much of this. Oh, we got Relic Ore. I do want that. Because I'm always on the lookout for relics, and I know... Uh, let's see, if we take a look at... Uh, Adam. Uh, it's funny, we haven't gotten the one for dying from a mob in Adam. Because we died from the Komodo Dragon, right? But we haven't actually died from an Adam mob yet. Uh, I'm actually missing four relics at the moment. And I've got 17 out of 41 on the museum. I haven't gotten any of these armor pieces. I'm hoping we get a little bit letter, better luck uh, from the god shards. So, oh, I haven't killed, like, camels and stuff yet. I may have to kill one. Because I'm trying to get the achievements, too. Dimension mods like this, I don't know. I just love... I love good dimension mods. And Adam is, is one of my favorites. Like, with Between Lands and Erebus... It's always, it's been around forever, and it's one of the few, like, it and Erebus, to me, are, like, two of the ones that, like, still have that sense of exploration for me, that have still been around. I mean, Between Lands does, but it's, you know, it's newer. It's only been around since, well, it's been around since 1.7, technically. Alright, looks like we do have a husk dungeon here. Uh, I'm going to take the thief's hood. I really don't need these. I, like, I really, really don't. Uh, we do have a backpack. I'll take it more so in case anybody on the server needs it than for me personally. Because it's, it's just a tier one, you know. Which, technically, we do have some Nebu drops. We, I don't think we've got enough, though. Actually, I'm going to take off the Amplify, because I don't necessarily have to have that here. There's Diamonds, which we will happily accept. Oh, I think I see something wonderful. There we go. There is our very first piece of nebu or you can see a basic break spell will get it for us now how can we go about processing this to get the most output at the moment we can smelt it for one uh, i know there's a whole big processing line we can mill it and then i'm assuming that we can then wash that perfect and then we have some nebu drops back at home uh, I will need the Nebu Hammer and the God Forge. So I'm probably going to want at least a little bit more. Like I said, I know I've got some Nebu drops back at home. But I mean, I don't think it's a ton. Because they don't, you don't find them that often in uh, the pyramids and stuff. So Luckily, you do find a lot of Nebu torches at least. So you never really have to worry about those. Though it might be possible. Yeah, and I'm also going to want Nebu Curio displays. I don't see a way to get the torches turned into Nebu drops. So, Because I know I've got a lot of torches. And ours mining is going to really pop. Uh, like mining with ours once we get up to tier 2. Like right now it works, you know. It works better without any amplifies, for sure. And that Gourmand, like, I get full saturation. It's so good. The Gourmand that we've got on our headpiece. It's only Gourmand 2, and I got a Gourmand 4 book. And Fortune 4, for that matter. That's so good. Which, actually, without the amplify on it, I can go crazy. And you can see, we can even break Nebu and stuff with no amplifies. That's kind of a big deal. Oh wow, there is a whole heck of a lot of stone guards here.
they're slow as sin though, but they are resistant to knockback, so. And if you just pillar up. But they're worth killing because we get uh, Q-mites from it, so. Oh, Blobfish. Which we can eat, so I'll probably end up eating that just for credit. Oh, we got Horus's Soaring out of the Relic. Uh, the Relic Ore. That's why it's always worth breaking. Plus, if you plan on doing anything with the gold coins, or if you like to hoard treasure, which I do, uh, it's worth having. It's worth breaking, because that's more treasure that you're going to be getting. Okay, we found a bit more Nebu Ore. Uh, and, oh. I like this one. Uh, I did look. Wow, this is a big deposit. Uh, I did look, and uh, actually, Nebu can spawn at any Y level. Uh, they made it that way. They set it up that way so that uh, that it's meant to be something that you find just while exploring, and there's not like a like a heavy restriction on where to find it. Just go uh, go exploring, you know, underground, basically. I mean, I guess technically you could probably maybe find it above ground, but I've never really seen it because most everything's covered in sand you know like used to there used to not be a whole lot of reason to go underground much uh, and i'm glad that they've kind of made it a bit more important uh, to spend a bit of time under underground now if we want to make the god forge blocks it's best if we set up our mumbies and so we're probably going to be setting up our mumbies today uh, and that way we get a little bit better output because it only takes two god shards instead of three and ideally, we'd like to save as many God Shards and get the best output that we can from those. Uh, so I do think that we're going to do a little bit with bees. And then we'll head over to the Undergarden. Like I said, the Undergarden, there's not as much to do as there is within Adam. Looks like a mine shaft. Yeah, it's some kind of a mine shaft. This would be probably a really good place to maybe find some Nebu as well. Just basically anything that spans a big area. Like caves are great. Mine shafts should be good. But I figure if we can find like one more deposit, that would put us pretty good. But I'm not actually having any luck finding any Nebu. Well, we might head home. We've got a lot. And as far as the rest of the loot that we've got, uh, we got all of this. Which actually I need to take these. Um, we got all of this. 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 This, this, not all of these. These are from the fishing farm. But then all of this stuff down here is all from Adam. All of this is from Adam. All of this is from Adam. Um, we got quite a few really good enchants, like Vitality 5, Excavating. And then all of this is from Adam. We've got Fortune 4 right here. That's kind of nice. Of course, uh, ours is going to take it a bit further come next tier, but that's okay. We'll still, I'm sure, make use of it. And I, I know I forgot to grab a couple sarcophagi, because I've only got, or I've got, uh, uh, I have 15 shader grab bags. So I'm thinking I killed 15 um, pharaohs in total. So I think I forgot to pick up, you know, a couple, a couple of the sarcophagi, but that is okay. Now this is something really we could wait to, for the crushing wheel, because Nebu is somewhat rare, um, but it's fairly, it really, realistically, it's fairly easy. And then once we hit ours, it's going to be even easier, like ours tier two, which technically we could push on to right now, but there's something I want from Undergarden just to make it a bit easier on us. So we're going to wait just a little bit. It looks like the byproduct for Nebu is uranium. There we go. There's our Nebu drops. We can go ahead and compact these. That's going to give us nine, nine Nebu ingots. And then for the God Forge, it's just a regular furnace or a limestone furnace, which is just, that's just default. So yeah, let's just go ahead and get our God Forge. Then let's go ahead. There's 14. I know I've got some more Nebu drops. So so we'll take, for example, a Geb's Undoing to start with. 
then let's go ahead and get ourselves a bucket of lava. We're going to take this and we're going to put it into the God Forge. And there we go. It's going to start running. And this is going to take and break down this into one of these God Shards based off of the God. So for this one, it's going to be Geb, for example. There we go. We got four Geb God Shards. And it looks like we just completed this quest. We're going to get some golden coins from that. Then they want us to make God Forge blocks. Now, like I said, I'd, I'd rather wait because you can see that uh, we can actually do three Dusty Mumby Honeycombs. And that's going to take the place of one of our God Shards and two of our Nebu Ingots. It's kind of a waste to rush on to this. So, uh, especially since we do have the Dusty Mumby Honeycombs. Or we do have the Dusty hum Mumbies. That's what I'm trying to say. I'll figure out what I'm trying to say one of these days. Uh, but you can see that we get four God Shards per... And so what we can do then is we can basically turn one artifact into two artifacts. Now we're just going to be making the standard God Forge blocks. You can also make these, which we might start making these a little bit later. Uh, but for this, like for example, if we made a Horus God Forge block and then we broke that down, we would be assured, basically assured that we're going to get a Horus artifact. Um, and if you take a look, Horus would be... Uh, Horus's Ascension and Horus's Soaring. But I think generally, especially with it being cheaper, because normally this is only one more God Shard, um, and that replaces a Nebo, but with the recipe for just the default God Forge block being as cheap as it is, I think we're just going to stick with this and just keep going, because Nebo isn't that hard to get, uh, especially once we get the Crushing Wheels. And then we're going to grab ourselves a God Breaker. Now, later on, this is something we'll, like I said, we'll have to automate because it is used um, for for quite a bit within the pack, like the the various different shards, because we'll need them for Master Corporea. We will need them for Eternal Crystals, Belt of Unstable Gifts, um, Tier 2 Dimensional Storage Stabilizers, Rituals for Summoning Pharaohs, quite a bit of stuff. Uh, it also is worth mentioning that there is special torches. There's actually going to be a quest here for the god torches. And actually the quest may talk about it. Yeah. So instead of using just your default Nebu torches, you'll get a pharaoh of the specific type. Alright, let's go ahead. I'm going to get these washed. Fill up my inventory just a little bit. Uh, and now what we're going to do is I want to get our dusty mumbies set up. And I actually want to mention bees briefly anyways. I'm going to take this bee nest it's time that we actually do a little bit of bees we're going to be doing a lot of bees soon enough but uh, we're going to set our bee up because we want it to be enclosed uh, but we're going to put our bee in right here and if we take a look at the dusty mumbi uh, the bee flower for that is oasis grass all right so let's go ahead grab our selves a Bit of oasis grass we should be all set so we'll just put that in uh, and then we're gonna put like a door or something just to kind of block this off for now uh, so that our bees don't get out and we should be able to do four right no two two bees is the maximum for this one so we'll just put a door in right there and a door in oops a door in on this side as well and I don't th think they I don't know they might be able to fit through that so for right now I'm just gonna block off this just to make sure because there is a little gap that runs up there and that should be good and then we're gonna take and put our dusty mumbies out now at this point uh, one of the thing that I want to get for this Let's get a dispenser. And then for right now, because we're not fully automating this at the moment, uh, we will, but not just yet. Did I break? No, I don't think so. We're going to put a dispenser in right here. Button, shears, and that way we can have the dispenser shear it. And we don't have to worry about the bees getting mad at us. I'm not sure how that got broken. Maybe I did break it. And didn't realize it because I already sorted my items. And if we can find some more bee nests at this point, we can speed it up even more. 
There's one. Most of the bees seem to have, like, wandered off. I need to make a bunch of bee jars, though, and start collecting them as we see them. That is a wild roguelike. Yeah. Huh. And then let's go ahead and get six more dusty mumbies. And we're going to go ahead and set these up. And once the bees that are in here get done, we should be able to shear this. Once the honey level hits five, we should be able to shear it and get our honeycombs out. Uh, you can also use a scraper, of course. But with these bee nest, uh, we can just as easily use shears. And actually, there's a quest line for resourceful bees. There's the Beepedia. I want that and the bee jars. And there's a bunch of information. This is just telling us about how to get certain bees with the entity-based stuff. We do have the Beepedia, so we do want to make sure and scan our bees. Uh, you can see there's going to be a list of all the different bees. And, like, for example, we can tab through. We can see uh, if it's poisonous, how long it spends in the hive, the flower that it needs, traits that it has and what we get as honeycomb produce uh, as honeycomb produce so for example let's go ahead and scan the bees that we've actually got there we go we've found one of 83 we're going to go ahead scan these There we go, we got that one. Honey level on this is five. You can see it's got these little marks. So we're gonna click. And there we go, we got some combs. Let's go ahead and scan our sandy bee as well. So now we've got three out of 83 bees. And we completed this quest. We're gonna get some shears and we're gonna get a farmer's delight bag with gourmet squid ink pasta. Okay, now we did get three dusty mumby honeycombs, which is enough. There is our very first Godforged block. Okay, and now we can take our very first Godforge block, break this with our hammer, and you can see we got Geb's Toil this time. Uh, consumes no fatigue to use and gives experience for your effort. Bad, and this should be a shovel, if I recall. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shovel. So we'll just put that away in there for now. And then once another batch of bees gets done, it seems like they're eating our, they're turning it into strange sand. Okay, well that's good to know. It means they're probably going to eat this place live, but I can just, uh, I can rebuild it. It seems like they're pollen. That's what it is, isn't it? Let me say, it's when their pollen falls on sandstone, I think it turns it into strange sand. Uh, blocker fluid mutations. Yep, sandstone turns into strange sand. Okay, that's fine. They're only going to break a few blocks that are in there. I'm not going to keep replacing them until I move our bees, but this is just temporary placement. I just want these up and going immediately. And if we ever get a duplicate with a god shard, then we've just gained two extra god shards. You know, we'll have to keep farming Nebu, but it's not that bad. So I would like to go ahead and make another Godforge block. So let's see what we get. Uh, Nephthys Banishing. Okay, that's another, that's a triplicate now. <laughs> I was really, I'm really hoping to get some of the armor, but it's taking a little bit. All right, now at this point, we are ready to head to the Undergarden. So I've built a little box here. These corners down here are not filled in, uh, but these are. We're going to just click that with our catalyst, put that away for now. Uh, and this is going to make our portal to the Undergarden. I'm going to bring my bee stuff just in case. I don't know if bees do show up here. Let's go ahead, mark this as home, and let's set out. We've got underbeans. We're going to go ahead and grab those because we will want to plant them. And then let's go ahead, grab ourselves some droop fruit because uh, we will be able to replant this as well. Uh, and I see melons right over here. Of course, we're going to get our plants first and foremost, our gloom gourds. And these we can turn into gloom gourd seeds. Uh, that way we can plant those out in our gardens. Uh, and then let's 
actually head down because what I want to find is going to be pretty low down. Oh wait, that's not the right spell. Uh, we do have Clogram, uh, which I'm going to want this. Non-amplified break does work, so we're going to go ahead take a bit of that. Um, also, I'm going to take some deep soil. I'll probably be gathering some materials from here for building, you know. Uh, we do have our mobs over here. Undergarden adds a few mobs. The rot walkers and the rot beasts, or the rot golems, basically. Uh, they hit not super hard. Like I said, I think, especially with a zoom spell, I think this dimension is going to be a whole lot less dangerous than uh, Adam. But there is a fair amount of them, for sure. And then we got the Rotling. There's quite a few other mobs, but that's all the the ones that are like really aggressive. This actually works out because I'm trying to get up to level 45 so I can get a new trinket slot. We're also going to grab some of this ditch bulb because uh, we can plant that. And it should work with a right click harvest. So mm, I already see what I'm looking for. That's good. Right over here, we've got dungeons added within the mod. And you're going to see these. They're underground dungeons. Uh, let's just go ahead and bust. Go ahead and bust the bars open. There we go. Now, this place down here could be a little bit dangerous. We'll have to see. But luckily, we do have ranged break. We can use that on the spawners to make it substantially easier for us, most likely. I think there'd be a spawner in this room. Uh, there we go. We got Nocturnal Powder. We got Forgotten Guardians. Lightning Arrows. Range 3 and Nature's Man. I don't really need that. Oh, we got Blacker Lotuses. Illumination Powder. Iceborne Lapis Lazuli. Sword of Latent Magic of Great Lengths. Sharpness 5. Fire Aspect 2. With extra cold damage and reach distance. Okay. Fingarium, Dynamism GM. Alright. Yeah, it makes me wonder if somebody... I didn't look to see if one of the other side's gates were down. But it does seem like maybe somebody has been through this one. It's funny because uh, my whole time in Adam, I never found a pyramid that somebody else had opened up. Technically, that guy's a traitor. But I, th I want to say there's a kill achievement for this dimension. So, we'll talk to him up a little bit closer before long. Boom. Yeah, I th I'm pretty sure. Because these would have spawners on the chains. And we're not actually coming across any. Rear Affix Tome. Scream Mammoth. Forgotten Guardian. Bronze Sword of Light and Matt. This is weird that all this Apotheosis stuff's here. Because we can take the affixes off of this. So, it's really good to go ahead and grab it. Here we go. The creepy vampire things. Nargoyles. It's like one of my favorite mob out of this place. Somebody m maybe came in here, but didn't spend a whole lot of time in here, I think. Maybe didn't fully explore it. And that little white creature down there is a bloop fish or something like that. I can't remember. Or a uh, something like they're really nasty looking little things uh, mythic affix tome got a couple more music discs another forgotten guardian incense stick for brew of cross souls tome of peridia that's huge because we'll be able to store experience another zachris tiny hut i don't need it uh, ensnaring crossbow crimson shade i didn't realize all this stuff came out of here though if we talk to these guys oh we talk to these guys, they basically deal in regalium, uh, and we can sell them, like, for example, diamonds or iron uh, to get regalium and to purchase other things, you know. Clogram Shield of Latent Magic, with Unbreaking 4. Vault. That's a leap slow fall. I don't have it. I don't particularly need it, but I'm going to take it. Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm like running off and not even paying a bit of attention. 
to what's ahead of us here. Oh, here we go. Here's a big spawner room. Okay, now at this point we can purchase another trinket slot. So we're going to take that. And let's take Dark Egg. We'll see what this one does. It's supposed to summon stuff to help us fight. We have Cross Souls. No, more Lightning Arrows. We're going to have so many Lightning Arrows. Oh, it makes Vex. Wow, that's really strong. I thought it was going to be more of like a joke thing, you know. But no, summoning Vex is actually pretty good. Uh, but you can use like Endless Quiver to get uh, basically Endless Lightning Arrows. That's what Zerani was saying the other day. I'm not planning on going like heavy with bows because I actually love my magic, you know. But uh, we probably will try to set up an Endless Quiver bow just so we've got Endless Lightning Arrows. So we don't have to make uh, snowballs anymore. Oh, there's the launch bale. Oh, wait. This one is a launch. It's a projectile that launches enemies and causes them to explode. I actually don't need that. I'm going to take the Brew of Vigor incense stick. Okay, now at this point, I really I have to head home. There's really no way around it, so let's just pop over and dump off our stuff. And actually, at this point, I've got everything that I had set out to get from there. So we're going to switch gears. We'll go back to the Undergarden. But uh, at the moment, what I would like to do is possibly set up another dump room. We're going to be dealing with items and some auto storage in the upcoming episodes, actually. But we have so... I feel like all these Blacker Lotuses are going to make early mana gen, like, super easy. Um, what we're going to do, let's grab the nocturnal powder out of this and I mean technically right now there are mobs out and it's sad because the other day I saw a, a blitz out here but he despawned by the time I was on that side of the mountain right and I hit record and was about to pop over here and he despawned all right let's go ahead then and we're gonna drop some nocturnal powder and we're just going to zoom back a little bit and this way this is going to be able to spawn us some mobs we got a witch go ahead and kill everything there's a tortoise oh and actually i could just leave my shield up and the vex would just kill everything for me there go. oh my gosh they just wreck everything all right so let's go ahead and do another one of these the nice thing is we got two of the mobs that we would want there's one all right you're dead you're dead and you're dead did we get a rod off of that one no but we did get a heart of diamond that's, uh, I actually think that's used for some stuff, right? Enchanting table. Then we need some Isis God Shards. That's actually not going to be that difficult for us. Oh, and you also need it for Lesser Tartarix. Nice. Well, we didn't get the rod that we were after, so... Let's go ahead and drop some more. Oh, we got two of them spawned this time, though. Yep, and there's one. There's a moat. Awesome. I've just created a war. And this is why I wanted good gear from Adam. Or, you know, just gear from Adam and stuff. Before we started doing this, because it is just in pure insanity here. And, oh, we did get two moats, too. Alright, so now let's go ahead and let's look for, like, snow or frozen places. Oh, actually, right here. Man, right net, right across the ocean from the desert, there is snowy tundra. Go get them, Vex. Just get them. <laughs> oh my god. This is actual madness here. There's what I need.
Yeah, that right there. There we go. We got a Blitz Cube. Okay, now at this point we can take our Novice Spellbook. And with the Blaze Rod, the Basal's Rod, the Blitz Cube, and the Blitz Moat from the Thermal Elementals. And the Shadow Gem, which technically at the moment we can't make. Because basically it takes the Alchemy Table, but it's a hop, skip, and a jump to the Alchemy Table at this point. Um, because it's actually pretty cheap. But we actually got Shadow Gems from Adam. So we can go ahead and upgrade it. And we're going to get the Mage's Spellbook. There we go. So now with this one, we can actually cast Tier 2 stuff. And our mana, like if we update this, you can see our mana cap is now 595 instead of 545. And our mana regen goes up as well. And we have access to Tier 2 Glyphs. So that's kind of the, the big deal of it. Because now we can actually start... Uh, casting some tier twos now marvelous clay does require gold powder so we're not going to be able to craft anything aside from just the marvelous clay we've gotten from quests until we push into nature's aura but actually i think what does it take for brilliant fibers i think it takes the silk moth silk fiber yeah but guess what Silk fiber comes from adam or a tomb however you want to pronounce it the biggest challenge is figuring out what I did with it. Which chest? Because I haven't sorted all this yet out. But yeah, there we go. Now technically, we're still going to do the Silk Moth stuff. Because it's actually kind of interesting. And I do want to cover that. Oh, but actually, we can get it slightly better. Because we can make two for the price of one. And we don't use Nebu Drops. Instead, we use Brilliant Fibers. I like it. Apparently, auto add put my sulfur into the cooking pot. I knew I had a lot of sulfur. Well, while that's, while that's building up source, let's go ahead and take a look at the mycelial source link. Because that's going to take sprouting fungus, which technically we have at the moment. And technically we can, that's what we wanted papyrus for is petal apothecary. Uh, we can technically pull this off really, really easy at this point. But uh, I want this. It's going to be a little bit of crafting, but it's not too bad. Okay, so I am going to need a... conduit and then we're just going to use our lightning arrow this time uh, in order to turn that over instead of using our charged snowballs at this point this should be done i think there we go there is our brilliant fibers and then what we're going to do with those we'll come right back to the mycelial and we're going to set up a little area to grow brilliant fiber Really, you only ever need one of these when it comes to making your gold leaf for Nature's Aura. These are aloe. By the way, with aloe, if you want to grow this, if you grow it on arid sand, it will actually make like additional seeds and stuff like that. If you grow it on the red arid sand, it's going to grow faster, but it's not going to produce extra seeds. So that's why I've got it on arid sand at the moment. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to shut off this bone meal production here in just a moment. Because we're not going to be making bone meal anymore, but we're going to be producing more source at this point. Making the most out of our, uh, making the most out of our source generation. So, and I'm probably going to be running source relays up to there because I actually want source ran up to there and have our enchanting apparatus and stuff up there. So I'll probably be uh, changing that over here pretty soon but anyways we're going to go ahead and get that and then the mycelial is going to be those two gold gold nuggets and then our sprouting fungus that we picked up and our conduit and while that runs this is um, actually the purpose of the arcane pedestal that we made a bit back we get a rare R's loot box and some source berry pie. Marvelous clay. That is marvelous. But like I said, we'll be able to make this now because that's default. Default recipe. And once we get our sylph going, uh, we'll have pretty much infinite of this and this. We do it every series and we will do it on here too. Uh, let's go ahead. I have to get that carbuncle to come over. Um, let's put our mycelial source link in right here and our arcane pedestal in right next to it is fine. 
and this field's actually going to get moved over soon. I've got to move everything though, and I just haven't done it just yet. All right, so your hopper's gone. You're going to be storing your items over here inside the arcane pedestal. Because what's going to happen is when the source berries go on here, my cellule is going to see it because it's a food. Uh, and it does give a boost for source berry based foods. Uh, now, granted, if we were to craft this further, we would get more mana. But this is basically going to be a decent amount of mana just passively coming in from the source berries. And we don't need them anymore. We have 24 and a half stacks of bone meal. We definitely don't, don't need them at this point. And that way we're kind of able to double dip to some degree from our uh, carbuncle. So, all right, I'm going to get the rest of this moved over at this point. And this is why we don't mind using rich soil instead of farming for blockheads because we're wanting them to grow fast. We're also wanting them to just grow. So we're getting mana really off of both of them, uh, you know, because this is going to produce a decent amount of mana per source berry. I mean, it's not huge, uh, but it is a decent amount. And it allows us to kind of double dip off this farm and produce, you know, even more, even more source coming in. And then at this point, I would like to go ahead and get the silk moth nest set up so that we've got it because we are going to need it for a lot of things. Uh, so what we're going to do, and this is going to kind of bleed into aquaculture. We're actually going to be doing a little bit with aquaculture in an upcoming episode. Uh, we're going to spend a few minutes talking about the fishing system because I do, honestly, I don't even know if Neptunium is used for anything and I really hope that it is. I don't I don't think so beyond just the Neptunium armor, but uh but what we're going to do is we're gonna make ourselves a worm farm. This right here. There is our worm farm. And then this works basically just like a composter. Uh so we would have this set up. I get a couple chests. And then what we can do is we can throw in any kind of organic matter. Uh, so for example, Kenaf fibers, they should work. I love my Kenaf. It just, it makes so much, so much fibers and so many seeds. And that's going to start filling this worm farm up. And then once it gets finished, oh, actually seems like hopper won't work with it that's fine we could still just right click <clears throat> to get our worms out so i'm going to grab four of those and going with this method it's going to make double this is already filled up isn't it yeah this thing fills up insanely fast uh with the mycelial added on uh it's going to be two phyto grow and then a couple brilliant fibers and then a bee nest and we can get ourselves our silk moth nest. Now I'm going to test something with this to see if it works because if it does work we're going to use it for our bees too. So we're going to do the same thing for right now but if my test works out then we won't have to. But something I'm not 100% sure about is the vertical range for enchanted ash. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to put uh, some silk moth nests in here here and then if we give these just a bit they're going to start spawning these silk moths now what i want to do is if i did this would it actually trap them inside or in the case of this one would it trap it outside no it doesn't seem like it it's just kind of like yeah whatever i'll just fly over that Now it's important that you keep these enclosed because just like bees, they'll wander off and basically they're just going to spew entities in the world. But if they if they are enclosed, they'll go back in their nest from time to time. So, but we can kill them, and we can get silk fibers from those. But it does seem like vertical mobs really don't care about enchanted ash, so we don't need that. We're going to have to keep it enclosed. Let's go ahead. Let's pop over and take a look at our brilliant fiber. You can see that it has now spread. Uh, let me actually go get my leaves so I can replace what I break for now until we get the sylph set up. Which we're closing, we're closing in on the sylph at the moment. Uh, so what we're going to be looking for are these like really vibrant looking golden leaves. You can see they have not spread upward, so I do think they need a connected block. That's fine. Uh, but these that are emitting particles and they're really gold, like this one's still changing over. So we don't want that one, but we want this one. 
and we can do that and get our gold fiber so we've got five gold leaves now I love seeing all this like it's just so good nature's over all these getting like custom recipes and actually feeling like integrated it's just it's nice uh okay we've we've actually got a brilliant fiber that way we can go ahead and complete that because technically we've we've sort of started into nature's aura a little bit at this point and we do have a couple nature's aura quests here so let's go ahead and get a rare nature's aura box then they want us to get some gold leaf what did we get i think we got gold powder no oh we got a token of joy that's actually really nice and then also before we end out we're just going to go ahead and make seven spells because we've got seven marvelous clay already made up this is going to get us most of the spells that we really want right this second the biggest one being the fortune glyph uh, so that way we can start breaking stuff with fortune uh, and it also works like looting for mobs you know but i'm also going to be getting uh, like aoe extend time amplify to crush shield and fail uh, but a lot of the ones that I really want, like Smelt and stuff, a lot of the stuff is going to require Blood Magic Alchemy uh, or Blood Magic Alchemy or Nature's Aura was the other one. So now we've got a number of new spells available to us and spell effects. And we have 700 maximum mana at this point. Uh, but at this point, what we can do is let's set like spell, uh, spell 10. And we're going to do a uh, just like a touch spell do we want it now let's do projectile uh, projectile spell and it's going to just be a break spell this one here and we are going to add fortune to it and for every level of fortune we can buff up how much fortune it's getting so this is the equivalent of having fortune eight now if we had this on a staff we could actually make this fortune nine which is the maximum uh, that we can obtain with ours but we're going to go big fort big fortune uh is what we're gonna make now i'd also like to get um extract but this does require a vitreous pickaxe so we'll have to wait just a little bit it's actually not probably for the reasons that you're thinking because we don't actually need batania for this uh, but we are going to need nature's aura for it so we'll be starting into some basic nature's aura probably next episode uh, but with big fortune if we were to break a thing of diamond that time of course it's all rng but it's a lot of mana too it's a lot of mana right now that's why i need to get us in some spellcaster gear but uh, i didn't want to use that one that was four diamonds there i didn't want to use that one just because i couldn't make it but now we can make it so i might i don't know these are just so good because they got mending i, I really want to get mending on gear you know before I start using it yeah this is uh it's slow mining it because it takes so much mana but that'll get progressively easier as we get more and more mana so and for stuff that maybe we want a lot of that one was nine diamonds and of course we'd never want to break it with our we'd never want to break like normal stone with our big fortune spell and remember this is fortune eight we can go one tier higher and we will uh, a bit later but Anything that can be fortune now, it's not an issue. It's slow, but it's not an issue. But once we get extract, then we could just silk touch them, take them home, and just kind of mine them at our leisure too. So, And we might be pushing on to the end fairly soon. This we're going to be getting into because I do want a Drigme set up. But yeah, so we got 38 diamonds out of that one diamond deposit. So that's not too bad. And there was actually like three that we didn't get all that lucky on, so... Um, and I'll be making like a fail spell. Uh, of course, you can you can break trees with you can break trees with break, and that you know that does work. And of course, we can punch it with vein miner. But uh, the nice thing about fail, which I know my carbuncle is going to go insane over this stuff. Uh, but if we do say touch fail, and we just boom, that's going to break most of the tree. Now I think if we were to amplify this, it would be just a little better. But what we could also do is change this then instead to a projectile. And that way we can just do that. And it uses up, you know, it doesn't use up a bunch of hunger and stuff like Vein Mine does. 
And then if we wanted to boost up our break spell, we could add AOE. And now if we wanted to just break things, that does a two by two. And if we wanted say a three by three, we could just do two AOEs like that. Uh, three, I misclicked and did this. It does a big monstrous four by four. Uh, and then if we wanted to go really, really crazy, it would take more mana, of course, but we could do this. And this would blow just huge holes into the, the earth. But you can see it does take a lot of mana, but it's going to be actually really, really nice for mining an atom uh, as we're looking for stuff there. So, so tier two, like, I, like I'd said, tier two, it unlocks a lot of just quality of life, really good things. Like, honestly, it's probably best we mine in mage robes for now. All right. But at this point, we are going to end out this episode because I know it's about wrapping up point. Now, next episode, we are going to be doing some stuff related to create doing some setups and stuff because we should be able to push into brass or bronze come next episode we can start setting up crushing wheels all that good stuff and actually start setting up some proper fully automatic ore processing which would be nice and then we are also going to be doing a bit with magic because we do have to do it just a little bit with magic to actually get the crushing wheels and then i want to i do want to start pushing into blood magic i want to kind of finish pushing through a lot of eidolon uh, so we can start doing our daily chants. Uh, we'll be doing a little bit with Batania. Maybe start some Astro Sorcery. It's a lot of like starting mods. And then depending on if we have the time next episode, we might start doing a little bit with Corporea. Uh, because it's going to make our lives a whole lot easier when it comes to sorting and organizing for early game. Until we push over into Refined Storage. Because Refined Storage is a bit farther in, in terms of the tech tree, than Corporea is. And it'll give us a good time to actually... I get to utilize and make use of all those corporeal sparks that we got from Adam. Because we got over a stack of corporeal sparks. That's huge. We can easily craft them too, but we do have a bunch of them. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already. To stay updated with when new videos come out, and I hope to see you guys next time. So, until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys then.